Hello everyone. Today uh, we're going to be talking about synthetics, the protocol, and how it works. So the outline for this video is going to essentially start off with describing what a synthetic asset is, what is synthetics, the protocol which we're discussing today, how synthetics works, and what are the risks with using it. So don't worry if a lot of these words seem foreign. Uh, we're going to break it all down so you'll have no issue. So I think let's crunch straight into it. What is a synthetic asset? So the best way to think of it, it's an asset which bases its value off something else. So suppose we had a uh, hundred US dollars, right? And suppose in a version of the world, one kilo of gold is 50 US dollars. Now, the whole idea of a synthetic asset is making sure that you have uh, more money than the asset's val value to create something new. So essentially what I'm saying is this $100 will get put into creating this, and this now becomes our synthetic gold. Now, if the price of gold, say, increases, to a hundred dollars instead so it goes up then in turn whoever created this asset will now have to provide 200 us dollars in total so an extra hundred dollars in difference and similarly if say synthetic gold goes down to 25 dollars then you only need 50 us to what we call collateralize it right so the whole notion of uh in this case we've got 100 to 50 which means there's a uh 100 uh 200 percent collateral ratio because we've got twice the amount of money for every dollar of gold we're representing so that's a whole notion of synthetic asset but the interesting thing that interesting thing to observe is that this isn't actually a real gold bar this is uh, purely just the representation of the price of gold it's not actually gold and that's the whole idea around synthetic assets that you get to um, essentially trade on the price action of something without actually owning the thing itself and the reason why this is really useful in a blockchain context is that uh, for example, in the case of gold, putting gold on the blockchain means that you need to, one, trust someone uh, holds it. Then you need to make sure you can uh, redeem it and it isn't expensive. Uh and three, you need to make sure that there's enough uh, buyers and sellers. This last problem isn't really eliminated with a synthetic asset, but at least it solves the first two problems. So now that we've understand what a synthetic asset is, let's talk about what is synthetics, the actual protocol. Uh, so let's pull out orange. So what is synthetics? Well, to answer it very simply, it's essentially a protocol that generates synthetic assets on Ethereum. That's literally it. So what that uh, means is that uh, using their native SNX token, you can deposit it to get something completely different. So maybe it's gold, maybe it's uh, a stock, maybe it's maybe even Bitcoin, for example, right? So you start off with this thing and then you can get any one of these things. So that's the idea around synthetics and kind of relating back to our previous example, rather than having $100, uh, we now have 
uh, a certain amount of SNX tokens instead. So uh, in this example above, we had a 200% collateralization ratio. In synthetics, uh, it's a lot higher, and this is something they're still working on, but it's typically in the 700% range. So meaning for every, uh, say, $1 of a synthetic that you want to generate, you need to have $7 worth of SNX tokens, which is very high. But uh, we'll get to that in a bit. So now that we've kind of covered what is synthetics and also what is a synthetic asset, we can now jump into how synthetics actually works. Um, blue. How synthetics works. Okay, so uh, first thing is that let's suppose that we have Alice and she has uh, 700 SNX tokens. You can get these 700 SNX tokens and essentially generate $10 worth of, uh, let's suppose, gold. And in this case, one gold is equal to uh, $10. So therefore, $10 of gold gives you one gold itself. Now, in synthetics, what this uh, kind of means is that this $10 is now contributed to what we call the global debt pool. So when we say global debt pool, it's that how much uh, of a synthetic have we actually created? So in this case, it's $10. Now, let's say uh, we then have... Uh, Bob over here, who also has 700 SNX tokens. But instead, he decides to create um, $10 worth of silver, where one silver is equal to $5. So he actually owns two. So 10 plus 10 will give us Twenty dollars. This is what we call the total uh, global debt in the system. All right. This is how much uh, money the system uh, has in it. Now, this is where like you kind of need to be switched on. Let's suppose that the price of gold. Uh, sorry. Before we go there. It's important to note that Alice holds 50% of the debt pool and so does Bob, right? They're completely equal at this point. And because they both owe 50% of 20, 50% uh, of 20 is equal to 10. So it's currently $10 that they can receive from uh, the protocol itself. Now, in a certain version of the world, silver decides to skyrocket to $10 instead of five. So where we had Bob over here, his two silvers were worth $10. They're now actually worth $20 because two times 10 gives us 20, right? And because his stake is now equal to $20, uh, the price of gold still hasn't changed, so Alice's debt is still $10. This new global system debt is $30, right? Because the value of silver has gone up. But because Alice still uh, retains 50% of the debt, debt pool, she now actually, so she put in $10, but instead uh, this, she now owes the system Fifteen dollars, so she's at loss for five dollars. Whereas Bob, on the other hand, um, he had fifty percent of the system bit debt, and he had put ten dollars in, but he is now owed uh, twenty. 
So he's essentially um, made a profit of $10. Let me just double check that. Uh, 10 times 2 is 20. He put in 10. Sorry, my bad. Um, let's rephrase this to make this more simpler to understand. So Alice still had 50% of the debt pool. So 50% of $30 gives us 15. And same thing over here. Bob also started off with 50%. And this is $15. Right, so this is how much uh, they debt that they respectively have. Now, because Bob actually his asset, his position itself is worth twenty dollars. That's what he has. He's made a five dollar profit, which is amazing for him. But because the debt has increased and uh, Alice still holds onto gold, she is actually now in loss of five dollars right so what this means in the synthetics thing it's kind of like a trading competition right where people can open different positions different prices different assets but one person's gain is clearly another person's loss and that's kind of uh the heart of how synthetics works right so it allows you to create synthetic assets through what's essentially uh, a trading competition where al uh Bob could walk away right now and claim his $5 profit. But if suppose gold actually then skyrocketed to $100, then Alice's debt or Alice has made a lot more money and suddenly Bob will be in the loss because Bob represents uh, still 50% of the debt pool, but Alice's position is worth a lot more money now. So hopefully that kind of gives you an overview of how synthetics works at its core. There's still a lot of details which I've kind of skipped over, but this gives you a very good conceptual understanding. Um, and I guess to finally wrap up, what are the risks, right? And this is where uh, I think synthetics is doing a lot of work, but it's good to know as a user. So the first risk as you've seen through the system is that whenever you open a position uh, on synthetics, and that's what they call uh, staking, you're basically competing against every other person on the platform. It's a live competition you're entering. And if you're not confident or you don't know what you're doing, you're gambling or risking uh, all of your SNX tokens. Because what uh, you need to do if you want to... So one thing which I didn't mention going back is that let's say you've opened this position in silver over here, but then you want to close your position. You need to make sure that you still have uh, a 700% collateralization ratio. So if the value of gold uh, goes, uh, say, up, you actually need to add more SNX tokens to make sure you can get your SNX tokens back. So that's kind of one risk in the system where, uh, A, you're competing against traders, but B, you need to make sure you have enough SNX tokens to retrieve back at the end of the day. The other thing is that you kind of need to make sure that basically this entire system works as intended and there's no bugs because if there's any bugs uh, in the smart contracts, then that can cause a lot of issues. So uh, I guess that's kind of standard for any DeFi protocol, but especially for ones where there's a lot more complexity as you kind of see over here. Um, and I think that's probably about it. Uh, Synthetics started off about two years ago um, and they've been working hard to, to deliver things people want. So I think right now you can get synthetic gold, you can get uh, a few Asian stocks, I think. Um, you can get Bitcoin uh, and I think a few other um, crypto coins as well, which aren't on Ethereum. So. It's really magical because now we can trade uh, synthetic gold on the blockchain uh, without having to trust anyone. And yeah, hopefully that explains what synthetics is and how it works.